Okay, so this is little Lois. She is here today for a spay procedure. So she's going to be going to have surgery. So we've been getting her ready for, for that this morning. Um, unlike cats and dogs, it's really important that rabbits um, have food before the surgery. They need to keep eating to keep their guts moving um, all, all through the preparation for the surgery. So she's got some kale here and some biscuits and things that her owners brought in with her from home. Um, and she's been eating quite well and is quite feisty as you can see. <laughs> so yep, yeah, we'll be getting her ready and giving her injections in a moment for the surgery. So we've got Lois here now. She's um, about to have her pre-medication injection. So we've got um, a meloxicam injection, which is an anti-inflammatory pain relief to keep her comfortable. And here we've got a combination of drugs to sedate her. So we're gonna be giving those subcutaneously now. Hopefully she'll be a little bit happier than she was in her kennel. And once we've given these, it's just a matter of giving her 10, 15 minutes to go to sleep. And she'll just slowly go to sleep and then we'll get her ready for surgery. Okay, so you can see here Lewis is um, asleep now. So um, I'm just gonna start getting her ready for her anesthetic. Now her sedative drugs have taken effect. So I'm just lubricating her eyes because they don't have their blink reflex when they're asleep so their eyes can dry out. So we have to add artificial tears. Now we always, when we're doing these procedures, even though we've already checked today, we also just have to double check once again, make sure we're doing the right surgery. So we just have to check that she's definitely a girl. So just looking there, that is definitely a vulva. So she's definitely female, so we're going to be doing the correct surgery and spaying her. So the next thing we need to be doing is placing the tube that's gonna be giving her her anaesthetic gas and oxygen during the surgery. Um, and we place it up the nose. So what I need to do is measure to the corner of the jaw, which is right down there, like that. So we're going up just here to this little mark. So I'm gonna place some lidocaine in the nose, lidocaine spray. Just give that a couple of minutes. We've got some oxygen flow by here for her. We also have a pulse oximeter, which measures the oxygen concentration in her blood during the procedure. So we'll get that set up and ready. Blood pressure monitoring as well during the anaesthetic. So we have a little blood pressure cuff going on her back leg. That connects up to this machine here. And we'll be getting a reading from that. So I've got the tube here, I'm just going to place some lubricant on it so that it goes into the nostrils nice and easily. Okay. I'm just keeping an eye on that little mark that I noted earlier. And we're going in as far as that, and that means the tube will be in the correct place. And now I can connect it up to the anaesthetic circuit here. It's got a breathing bag there and hooked up to the machine where we monitor the oxygen um, levels going in. And also this is the isoflurane, which is the anaesthetic gas, which will keep her asleep for the surgery. So, um, Lewis is now ready for surgery. We've just got to prep the area um, with some scrub and then move through to theatre. But we've got the blood pressure monitor, which is reading. So we're getting nice readings there. Um, the pulse ox is on and we've also got the Doppler here. So we can actually listen to the heart beating, which is excellent and reassuring for everyone. And um, she's nicely asleep. We've got her IV catheter in her ear here. Um, it's all taped in so you can't see, but I'll show you on the other ear. We use the lateral vein just running down the side there. Um, and we've got her on fluids for the procedure to um, maintain her circulation. So we'll just be moving her through to theatre now and we'll see you in recovery. Okay, so here she is at the surgery. She's 
off all of her um, connections now, so the tube's out and she's off her fluids and she's just recovering. She's very, very sleepy still. So it's always important with small, um, small species of animals um, that we check their temperatures and make sure that they're not too cold. She's been on a heat pad all the way through the surgery and wrapped up, but we need to make sure on recovery that she's not cold at all. So normal temperature for a rabbit is about 38.3 to 39.4 degrees Celsius. Um, so we're, we're aiming for that. It's a little bit lower here, so which, which does happen as a result of the anaesthetic. So we're gonna get a little hot water bottle ready for her. We're gonna be popping her in here. Um, it's nice, small, enclosed space, so she's not gonna um, roll around and hurt herself at all. Um, and we'll be all around her watching her recover and she'll be visible to everyone. So we'll get her tucked away in there now. As soon as she's recovering um, and hopping about, we need to try and get her feeding and eating as quickly as possible. Um, it's like I said, preoperatively, it's really important for rabbits that their guts remain active and keep moving. So um, the only way for that to happen is for her to keep eating. So as soon as she's awake, we'll be offering her some carrots and some kale and things and getting her eating um, before we can send her home. Okay, so we've got Lewis here. She's awake now from her procedure, so back in her kennel. Um, so she's been awake for a little while. We've removed her the IV from her ear, the IV catheter. Um, and now we're just gonna try and attempt to get her to start eating before she goes home. So I've got some fresh kale and some carrots. Um, I don't know how impressed with me she's gonna be after her surgery. That will give her the opportunity. Ooh, might be a bit interested. What's this? But we'll keep trying. We'll leave this with her for a bit and see if she'll eat without us watching her and come back and see her later. But once she's eaten something, we can arrange for her to go home.